Okay, so we have Francesco Piscinini. Piscinini. What he said. <laughs> and Marvi Benedetto. Benedetto. Perfect. Perfect. They're going to be talking to us about the work for solution for public administration of North East 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 East, East Italy. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. So good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Francesco, and uh, he is my colleague Marvi. And this is our second time here in uh, Open Ship Summit. And uh, we want to thank all the guys from the organization for the very, very nice job. And uh, this year, yeah, the last year we were just, we just attend the meeting. And this year we decided to put ourselves under, te under test. And so just try a presentation of our, uh, our uh, project uh, that uh, consists in a building a web platform for the, for the public administration. So this is a brief overview of the topic. So first of all, we will talk about just a few things about um, us and our company, uh, which are the project goals, the environment, and then details about the system architecture. We'll talk about the components, the co-routing logic, and then my colleague will talk about free switch, dynamics, centralized configuration, the web uh, interface, and uh, the nice part of the device provisioning engine. So here we have to do a little premise, so uh, as our company is uh, in a transition phase. Uh, we were not authorized to use any name or logos of the company. So uh, for this reason, we just decided anyway to provide the presentation, but it will be in a kind of anonymous, among anonymous form. So we, we provide, and I know it's strange, but this is, uh, we provide ICT solution for the public administration. We are an ICT system integrator. We provide IT service development and uh, deployment and maintenance, and we also provide software solutions. Our department, in particular, is in charge of the network service deployment, and uh, we have an eye focus on VoIP and unified communication technologies. So which are the goals of our project? So we want to provide and to, to bring the VoIP and unified communication technology to the local PA world. I know that some of the guys here came from Italy, and they probably know how it's hard to do, how, how it, it is a, an hard task. So another important goal of the project is to, to reduce costs. And we want to, to drop the maintenance charges of, of the legacy PBX, hardware and software fees. We want to cut the PSTN connection and reduce the traffic over them. And of course, using open source software solution. Then the platform should help us in simplify the management and the deployment of new customers, improve the system scalability, uh, scalabilities, and provide a high level of customization. So if you need uh, new features, just don't wait for a uh, new software to be released by a third party company. Just uh, provide and develop the feature by yourself. <coughs> Where we are? So we are located in the northeast side of Italy, and we provide voice uh, services for the local public administration. And this project is uh, targeting the municipal offices and the school campus. Here is a brief overview of our infrastructure. So we have a fiber optic network with around 200 POP distributed around uh, the region. And uh, these POPs provide connectivity to local public uh, administration offices, hospitals, schools. And um, we have also two, a couple of data centers in the region. Uh, these data centers are located in different uh, geographic areas and are configured in a disaster recovery and business continuity for all the services. So as we provide just the services to the customer, so we don't provide hardware or, uh, or uh, equi equipment on the LAN, we must have defined some requirement that the customer sites must, must match before connecting to our services. In particular, they have to be connected to the fiber optic network. They have to satisfy some minimum requirement on the cabling and on the equipment on the LAN. And regarding the device, they must own SIP standards, phones, and gateway, and uh, be connected to the PSTN using uh, ESDN lines or SIP trunk. As we are talking about uh, public administration, 
we usually need to provide the continuity of the services. So for this reason, we, for this reason, we also ask the customer to uh, use voice gateway with, with the integrated server registrar function, or provide a local uh, local server for uh, an eventually uh, IPPBX uh, local free switch instance. Of course, the, the phones must support the failover features uh, to, to guarantee the, the local survivability. So this is an overview of which is before the situation of our uh, telephone infrastructure, and which is and this is the situation we want to reach at the end of the project. So before we have many many local and standard old PBX deployed on the region. And at the end, we would like to have just devices, like phone and voice gateway on the customer side, and all the platform located in, uh, in the data center. So a uh, kind of ep centric topology. Here is a brief overview of the architecture. It's very simple, or very, very simple architecture uh, uh, respect to what we see this morning. But anyway, we have a uh, solution with the free switch clustering with OpenSIPs. We use OpenSIPs have, uh, as a SIP proxy and balancer. So it is a, a front end of all the infrastructure. Behind uh, the OpenSIPs, we have free switch that is acting as a class 5 soft, soft switch. We have a MySQL DB backend uh, for data sharing between the free switch and the OpenSIPs boxes. And we also have a uh, web server side uh, per in order to provide the provisioning for the devices and management of all the, the systems. So high availability is a guaranteed at application and operating system level. Uh, by, for OpenSIPs, we use an active standby configuration. Uh, we have a My, MySQL DB cluster. Uh, all, the, all, the, all the hosts are uh, uh, virtual machine uh, um, boxes, so we can also use the hypervisor feeders to provide the high availability. Of course, the, the, all the infrastructure is deployed in a couple of database, in a couple of, sorry, of data center. And so we can also uh, use the disaster recovery configuration to provide high availability of the service. In order to let the keep alive, uh, so the VRP protocol to work between the data center, uh, our colleague from the network uh, um, department uh, implement a solution based on the VXLAN technology. So this is uh, let us available the um, chance to use the VRP between the, the, the data center. So OpenSIPs, as I already said, he used as a proxy and the balancer. So all the endpoint uh, just deal with OpenSIP <laughs> front end, so no direct signaling is made against FreeSwitch. FreeSwitch operator is a load balancer against the FreeSwitch farm and uh, is performing a drive and load balancing. So he's able to retrieve uh, the load of the boxes uh, from free switch and then routing calls on, and signaling basing on, on the real state of the boxes. Uh, free switch reachability is already checked by the balancer. So in the case of fail of one of the machine, it is automatically removed from the pool uh, in case of failure. Uh, yeah, as already said, OpenSIPs operate a dispatcher for SIP uh, registration and presence that is managed directly by FreeSwitch. As we know, we have a, okay, this is yeah, uh, a deep uh, overview of the load, drive and load balancing and dispatching. As you can see, so using the FreeSwitch module, OpenSIPs uh, connect to the FreeSwitch uh, event circle layer and it retrieves the statistics that uh, allow him to calculate the max load and the dynamic, uh, dynamic, uh, dynamically the weight before routing calls and signaling to free switches. Free switch farm is uh, composed of a, a machine that acts as a class five soft switch and they provide typical PBX service to the client. So PVR, Inbound, inbound and outbound road management, pick up, answer group, etc. And in order to build and to customize that kind of features, we make an heavy use of the Lua scripting. 
uh, as we said, uh, FreeSwitch is taking care of SIP registration and presence. And uh, using the MySQL backend, we share the live and uh, static configuration data for, for the machines. Here is a brief overview of how an internal and external call is handled by the, the, by the system. So all the signaling is handled directly on the balancer and uh, is then relayed to the through each box that acts as a back-to-back -back user agent. And then again to the, to the open SIPs that route the signal lead to the, uh, to the client to complete the call. The same things happen for the external call. Uh, the difference is uh, the listening port that is 5080 for the external call, but the path that is taken by the signal is the same. Uh, about the media handling, as we are uh, working on uh, mainly on uh, uh, a network that allow us to um, um, avoid NAT issue because it's a closed, closed network, we decided to handle the media directly uh, between the client and uh, anyway free switch and open SIP still maintain the control of SIP signaling. Uh, this allows us to save one bandwidth so usually phones and gateways or phones uh, by themselves stay in the same LAN so we can save bandwidth without uh, putting uh, RTP on the on the van through the data center. In this way we can also unload the free switches boxes so we can leave a CPU free if we, we don't need the transcoding, and we can maximize the call traffic performance of the machine. We have some exception to this, uh, to this situation that of course are uh, called directly to, directed to the free switch service EVRs, and voicemail, compress, etc. Uh, the call recording and just coding required. Uh, we also have some buggy clients that sometimes have difficult to have some problem managing the uh, media directly, especially for refer and transfer. So in this way, we through the web interface, we can manage the media handling directly for all, every single extensions. Here is some notes about the co-routing logic. So the system is a multi-tenant platform. So every customer is deployed as a virtual PBX instance. The virtual PBX are divided into department and site, and this is based on the customer needs or deployment. So virtual PBX for us is equal to a SIP domain, and in this case we can differentiate two types of calls. So an intra-domain call that we consider a call made between extension belonging to the same domain, and we can consider them as internal calls, or inter-domain calls that are calls made by extension belonging to different virtual PBX. So, uh, for this reason, uh, as one of the targets of the project is to reduce costs and cost traffic over the PSTN, we have to find some way to recognize this type of call and root call between domains, avoiding and bypassing PSTN. So we have identified two solutions. The first one, that is an old style solution, is just to, to identify a virtual PBX access code for every domain and recognize. Uh, recognize the prefix uh, and route the call to the, uh, to the right domain. This requires anyway some action by the user that must remember the prefix. And in order to have these things perform in the right way, we must implement some tools like, uh, for example, web phone book and adding a click to dial feature. The other solution that, is, that has the advantage to be transparent for user it to use uh, the deed that identified on the PSTN the other customer. In this way, using the enum, we can perform an enum query, and the system will have uh, the route to reach directly the customer uh, without uh, passing over the PSTN. What is enum? As we already know, enum is a, is a standard that provides through a standard DNS system the translation of the telephone number into a DS, special DS, DNS record that is now NAPTR. And for this function, we use the free switch enum module that provide uh, some API like enum auto that give us the, the possibility to generate a dial string directly from the bridge app. So if I perform an enum auto, 
it will send uh, an um query to the DNS, uh, to the num server, and then we have the the yeah the data string that I can put inside the bridge to to perform the call. Uh, another interesting interesting things that I can do with uh, enum is to use the service field of the an aptr record to differentiate uh, on the free switch uh, the profile that I use to run the call. Here is uh, a brief example of the enum uh, feature. So free switch makes an enum auto query for every outbound call. So if the enum server returns an aptr, we place the call internally, so by passing the PSTN. If it does not provide any resolution, we just go through the PSTN. This uh, functionality gives us the possibility to make some failover conditions. So for example, if the enum server does not provide any, any uh, for example, is auto service, so it can provide any resolution, we just handle on the free switch the hang up calls, and then we can place the call to the PSTN so we can ensure the service. In another case, if, for example, the new server provides a resolution, but the internal destination is not reachable because, for example, the remote site uh, is performing, uh, is experiencing a ban outage, we can handle the same condition, place the call against PSTN. Uh, um, using the um, telephony survivor survivability mode active on the remote site. So the remote site uh, extension are registered on the local PBX or, or SIP gateway registrar, and they can receive the call from the PSTN. So this is my part, then I give space to my colleagues who may be talking. Yes. <coughs> So, I'm Marvi, and I'm going to talk to you uh, how we implemented the web administration and the device provisioning of the system. Okay. These are our goals. Is uh, you here? No, no. You can hear it. It is the button on the top. <coughs> no? Yeah. Okay. So. We want a central web administration for the entire system, but also uh, delegate web administration for the domains. We need automatic provisioning for phones and devices in a private context. Here is a list of uh, functionality in our solution, and uh, all of that need uh, to be configured by uh, the web interface. We need a uh, uh, system easy to use because our domain and mine are not uh, telephone ex expert. So uh, they think about users, the telephone number, and not to, to con configuration files or something like that. So the system sh uh, should reflect this aspect. <coughs> this is uh, an example of a user configuration page. And uh, that mind just add here phones, extensions, and then uh, the system uh, will uh, generate all the things that he needs, and uh, uh, just plug the phone, and the system will uh, will keep uh, everything okay. So this is an example of a, a service, a time of the day routing. We define define in an easy way actions. This is that you can see. This is the action, and this is the associated timetable relative to the action. So, uh, when uh, requested, the system will generate the correct XML in response to the system. Yes, another example. This is a answer group. We define uh, <coughs> the type of the answer group, just uh, sequential or uh, simultaneous the timeout and uh, just add uh, then the uh, relative extension to use to, the, to it. 
Another example, and this is an, an IVR. Uh, here is the text. And then we, uh, we use the Google time to, time to speak, uh, sorry, uh, text to speech service to, uh, to get the, the vocal file. So the admins doesn't need to, to create it manually, but it's very easy for them. Just write there and then uh, press submit, and, and everything works like that. So, this is a list of, the, of uh, tools we used. We obviously uh, use OpenShift, FreeSwitch, MySQL, Nginx, uh, Keep Alive. So we don't speak about this uh, and this. But uh, the most interesting part of uh, our work is uh, the last part, where Chupai, DB3, uh, sorry, D3.js uh, uh, library, uh, Python in general, or uh, Chupai, and as uh, we already said, the Google Cloud service for the rendering of the vocal file. So, we are running a lot uh, out of time, so we try to go faster. This is the, what uh, we implemented. Uh, the most interesting part is the mod XML CURL configuration interface with the uh, free switch and the device provisioning. See, mod XML CURL is a, a very interesting uh, module of free switch. Uh, I don't know if uh, all of you know what what the uh, user for. So. Um, Typically, when you configure a system, you have to write a lot of uh, static uh, configuration files. But uh, this is not the case when you have a cluster of uh, servers. It's best uh, to have another strate strategy. And uh, this module is uh, what is, uh, uh, is the, good, the right way to, to do the things. So, uh, free switch can be configured in a way that uh, uh, making uh, a post will request uh, uh, a configuration and if they get a, a, a response it will use it only if it doesn't get an, uh, a usable answer it uh, will search for a static file so this is a snippet of the configuration file we can uh, we can say to free switch to look uh, in this way for configuration directory and also the, the dial plan. Okay, so what what we done is a complex web application that writes all data to a DB. This is a rich application, easy to use. And then there is a very smart, very light application that. Uh, interface with which with the data on the database uh, this application but is a uh, is a very critical as uh, every case needs some info before starting so this uh, this application must be very 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 low latency and also very high reliability so uh, in this case we used a single file in python that is uh, very efficient and uh, makes uh, things work very well, very well. <coughs> so this is a neat snippet of the of the program we can see that uh, uh, this is, we can see that uh, it look uh, it receive a post from uh, uh, from the free switch then uh, it generate uh, the relevant information and, uh, and get and, uh, and uh, uh, answer with an uh, XML uh, response. This is uh, the data that uh, uh, switch will post to the, to the application. So we can see uh, this is a separate out request, and this is the answer generated. Another example is a service. Uh, configuration so we see this uh, configuration request and also a dial plan request 
this is for an IOR configuration, and this is for a time of the day, uh, time of the day routing in their plan. So, the second part is the rich application that uh, uh, writes the configuration to the database. So we are running out of time, so uh, something uh, we we don't speak about. We uh, speak about only uh, the web from framework that uh, I choose for this purpose. That is named Web2Py. It's a model view controller, so, uh, where model means uh, uh, the data structure, controller is the business logic, a view is the the way that it is uh, represented. So typically, we have uh, one file with all the tables defini defined there, some controllers with uh, typically one for each table of the database, and uh, each uh, controller have uh, many functions like uh, create, edit, delete, list, and so on. Then for every function of the controller, we have uh, the relative uh, view files that uh, is used for representing the page. So this is uh, a snippet of the model file. It defines the device table. Re writing this, Web2Py will create automatically the corresponding table in the database. This is a function inside uh, the, contr the controller. The, with, with this line, we select, uh, we make a join between uh, two tables, the devices and the CD, that means offices, and then we uh, return all the records to the, to the view with this simple instruction. This is a snippet of the view. Uh, it's a template language, so with uh, this syntax, uh, for record in records, we create a loop that terminates with pass and uh, analyze all the records we pass to the view. And finally, this is the result. So, in a very efficient way, we can create uh, uh, a good uh, web application for configuring something of, of, uh, of uh, our data. So, this is the, the name of the application. This is the controller, and this is the function inside the controller. <coughs> and this is the result. Web2Py has a, a smart feature called Common File Fighter that is very useful, useful for us because we uh, need to divide the administration uh, into, the, uh, into domains. So we need uh, global admins that can change all the, the data of all uh, the domains, but also uh, domains and admins that uh, <coughs> uh, can change all, all only their own data. So, using this simple uh, syntax, we define a filter that uh, uh, will append to every query a, a filter a where uh, where clause. So, uh, uh, if we uh, set a session domain variable at the uh, at the start of the at the login, and uh, we add some logic in order that only global man can change this uh, this variable, and uh, uh, the other not. We can realize a system in which uh, uh, our global admins can uh, change everything and uh, the, the domain admins only their own the, the data. So, uh, we pass to the phone provisioning. We are, lot, we are a bit late, so I try to go faster. Uh, we use uh, <laughs> we use uh, option 67 uh, for passing to the phone the provisioning URL, and then uh, the, um, the phone will, uh, uh, will make uh, a request to the provisioning system. So what we have to do, we have uh, to grab the MAC address of the 
the, the form, uh, grab information from the database, and create uh, the, the, uh, the provisioning file. So the data can be very complicated, the structure, because we, have, we need a lot of information for, for a, a provisioning uh, in our system. Uh, yes, see, uh, we need uh, to do very a lot of queries on the database. This is the system, how it works. This is uh, the request that the phone uh, is placing to our system. This is configured in the option 67, 66. This is the uh, domain name, and this is what the phone appends to it. So with uh, our controller, we can get, uh, this is passed as ARG0 and this as uh, ARG1 to the system. So with uh, a regular expression, we can grab all this information, then choose uh, the right record on the database, and uh, we have to pass uh, the, the right uh, template to the engine in order to create on the fly the provisioning file for the form. So, uh, this is a snippet of the uh, provisioning file for a, for a SNOM. And we can see the loop for the, all the lines defined in the database, and another data like by BLF and speed dial. Okay. Last, we have uh, a system that uh, uh, creates a configuration tree of the system for every domain that is uh, automatically generated and uh, you can see in a uh, in a uh, uh, home page uh, the configuration of all uh, uh, the system or for a domain and uh, each node have a, a different meaning so uh, the red one are in, in roads the yellow one are hardware uh, the, the purple one are uh, time of the day routine <coughs> Uh, green are um, answer groups, and finally the blue are the extension, uh, final, the terminating extension. So, so this is the system. We can see live. Okay, for example, this is the domain. We can see uh, I don't know that one. <coughs> okay, this is a graph. It is interactive, so we can uh, close or open the, all the nodes. It's interesting to see uh, different uh, domains, uh, how they, they create the configuration. So, oh, no, sorry. So, this is a uh, one, this is a very simple one. Okay. Okay. This uh, just another the last one. You can. Oh, so sorry. Okay. I'm, oh, okay. Uh, I'm officially cutting you, John, off. But I actually have some good news. If you have any questions for them, and.